Hey there! Today we're going to talk about this pen. This pen does not belong to me. It is a Hero 2060. And it was sent to me by Colin. And Colin said, this pen skips around quite a bit. And I hate pens that skip. That's not what he said. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, you buy a pen, you don't buy a kangaroo. So when stuff is skipping around, that's, that's not a good thing. So I had a look at this uh, pen for him. And... Um, when I had it here, I thought I might as well do a review of the pen. So, here we go. First of all, this is a big pen. This this is, I mean, I'm not kidding. This this is a serious pen, and when you post this, it's, it's pretty huge. So, if you like bigger pens and heavier pens, because it's all metal, then you may enjoy one of these. So, I'll cover the parts of the pen. Uh, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll, I'll briefly mention what I what I did to the to the nib. Um, let, let's start with the parts of the pen. On top, a weird thing that looks out of place. It's a little, I don't know, a sort of cream-colored, silvery metal, and nothing else in the pen has that color. So that's a bit of a pity, but you know, who cares? I don't look at the top of the cap all day like that. We have a clip. The clip is nice and springy, uh, and it has a little wheel, which is kind of funny. Uh, it doesn't seem to rotate a whole lot right now, but there is a little wheel. I like the idea. I like the idea that they try to do that. Um, a little gold band to keep the clip in place, another little gold band, and then a center band which says Hero 2060, and it has a little flower on there. I know this is not going to focus, but there is stuff on there. Um, the flower has a, an H in there, sort of stylized H. I think that's the Hero logo. Okay, then we have the barrel. Uh, it doesn't seem to be extremely tapered. I don't know a whole lot of hero pens that taper now that I think of it. Here I got another one. It doesn't really seem to taper. Um, so, interesting, but you know, if you really like the, the sort of cigar shaped pens, these are probably not for you. Okay. Um, we have, this is not a blind cap, it looks like one, but it's, it's not a piston filler, unfortunately. Little gold ring there. It's not real gold, of course. You can post the pen very securely on that end of the barrel. I, I like that feature a lot. As I said, it, it turns into a very large pen when you do so. That's a little top heavy because of the the cap being metal and, and all that stuff, but okay. The section, black, tapered, a little bit of gold colored metal there uh, with a, a, a small lip to keep the cap in place. Make sure it, it clicks in place. Um, when you unscrew that, this this pen did come with a converter, I think. Colin sent me two pens, you see, and there was one converter. Uh, this was it, and this this converter, with all due respect, it just sucked. Um, it doesn't seem to be airtight, so when you draw up ink, the ink just flows out straight away. Uh, and I even had, there's a little hole in the back. I even had ink come out through the back, because apparently the seal isn't entirely, well, a seal. So ink just flows out. It's 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 terrible. So so uh, this this converter doesn't work out. I put in a Monteverde mini converter. I had one lying around. This this uh, uh, just for the review. Uh, it works well, as you can see. It fits well. Just a standard international um, adapter or nipple on there. So you could just put that on. Nib and feed. You can pull them out. Useful for cleaning. Um, and that's pretty much all there's to it. So what do I like about the pen? What do I not like? Well, I like the design. I think it's it's a pretty nice design. Some people may think it's a little blocky or something. For me, that wasn't really an issue. Of course, there's some dodgy stuff with a little wheel, and then it, it doesn't really turn. I mean, that's that's. I mean, these these are fairly inexpensive, cheap pens. It's what you get. I think it looks cool. It's pretty big. It's pretty heavy. Two qualities I I appreciate in a pen. Um, you have this nice thing on the clip. I'm not sure why you can see that, but there's you see these these little lines. There's one, and here's another one. Those are actually like like gold leaves, one over the other, so superimposed. I I, I like that nice bit of detail. Uh, so so that's pretty much all there's there's to it. Uh, so what did I do? When I checked out the nib uh, under a loop, what I saw was that there was something wrong with the alignment of the tines. What you would like to see when you do that is tines that are 
uh, something like this. I'm exaggerating a bit now, but you would like to have the breather hole here, and then a beam of light passing through them, and you want that to be tapered. So it should be wide as near the breather hole. I'm, again, I'm exaggerating now. You don't want this in a nib. Um, and then the two tips should almost touch, but not entirely touch. What happened with this nib was that the, the tines were splayed, so they ran like this. Breathe a hole there, and then they, they moved out. When you do that, uh, you can do that when you're a little over-enthusiastic, uh, uh, putting a shim in there, for example. Um, you're actually hampering the capillary action of the nib. You see, it's this sort of tapered thing that, that keeps a little drop of ink suspended between the tines, then when you hit the paper, capillary action draws it out onto the paper, and you write. Now, when you do this, the opposite thing happens. I'm not insulting you. I'm just showing you something. Let's, let's do it this way. Um, <laughs> um, when you do this, the opposite can happen. And the tines are here, the tips are there, and the ink flow, sometimes, especially when you store the, the, the pen like this with the nib up, ink may actually flow back into the feed, and then it will not write at all, and then you get skipping. Now, this was a difficult nib to work on, because as you may see, it's quite narrow. Uh, if you compare that to a... Uh, this is the other pen Colin sent me, a, a, a Jinhao X450. You see that with this this Hero pen, the nib is very narrow and a little difficult to, to and that's a bit difficult to work with, because I found it very difficult to, to compress the two times to get them back into alignment again. So, since the pen didn't write at all, what I did was just snip off a little bit of the the nib. Um, I don't recommend you to start doing that with your Viscontis or anything, but with a, an inexpensive pen like this that just doesn't write, sometimes you need to take some drastic action. So I took that off. Now you can imagine, if you have this, and you cut it off here, at least the problem gets less pronounced. Then I could push them just a little bit back, just a little bit further. And what I did was I just ground the nib down a bit and turned it into an italic. Um, an italic-ish nib, so I'm not sure why you can see this, but the nib is actually quite flat. Um, I know this won't focus, this is probably pointless anyway, but I just thought I'd, I'd try. Um, there were some alignment issues too, one time seemed to be a little higher than the other, so there was a lot of stuff going on with this nib, and I fixed it, as far as I know, because I think it up twice now, I've written with it, it doesn't skip, it doesn't have startup issues, so I guess the problem is fixed, I hope Colin likes an italic, because otherwise it's not really a solution to the problem, but uh, uh, this is what I could do. So, that's what I did. I think I should now show you a writing sample, show you what it means, uh, what the effect is of what I did, and um, that's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful. Colin, this pen is going to go back to you very soon. Um, I hope you like the results. That's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, writing with the Hero 2060. Again, bear in mind this pen will not write like this out of the box. Um, it is now a somewhat, well, somewhat italic nib I, I made of this. Um, it's juicy and wet. The ink is Ackermann. Trève turquoise. Let's do some writing. As you can see, writing is smooth now. There was a little bit of feedback with some of the strokes, but I, I, I personally wouldn't call that scratchy. <laughs> I hope the owner of the pen agrees. Let's do some fast writing. See how well the the feed keeps up. See, the nib is nice and wet, no skipping, no skidding, no strange stuff going on. All quite nice. Okay, um, what about line variation? Well, when it comes to flex, This is not the greatest nib around, it's quite stiff, but because it is now a bit of an italic, 
So I'm not applying more pressure on the downstrokes. As you can see, it has a natural line variation. This is not under pressure, this is just equal pressure in all motions. So that's what it does now. Um, and, and that's what, what I like in a nib. Okay, what about wetness? As you can see, I made it nice and wet, the way I like pens to write. And, um, well, I guess that's all there's to it, isn't it? So here you go, Hero 2060. Nib didn't perform to the owner's liking. Um, I tried to get a workaround somehow. And this is what we ended up with. So I hope he is satisfied. I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.